about what is the proper way to develop youth and educate them. Why is China not engaged in that struggle openly with the West? China comes to Africa today largely as an investor, as a lender, as an infrastructure provider. That's the state and that's Chinese capital. We're talking more about the Chinese people. It's, we're, we're grateful for the scholarships and that support, but we'd like to see Chinese people come other than as businessmen. We'd like to see Chinese people attend university in Ghana, do seminars, do courses. We'd like to see Chinese people do more tourism in Africa. Okay. We would like to see that relationship itself framed a bit more within the context of a new emerging world. So it's not just here, here are scholarships, come study, go back. But when you come to study, what's the framework within which you study? You learn a specific skill. You study journalism, you study engineering, you study medicine. But what is the ideological content of that program? What is it geared towards? What's the world that China and Africa are seeking to build? And therefore, what structures, what's the, the, the context of the education that is provided here that ensures that when they go back to Africa, they don't just simply jump on the next plane and run off to the United States, but they are committed to building something together. All of that is important. And that only comes if the, the, the cultural context of the education and the cultural context of the relationships with Africa are deepened. You know, um, that's the kind of thing I'd like to see. I'd like to see, uh, I'd like to see Chinese medical brigades in Ghana, in Africa. We want our young people all over the world, especially between China and Africa, to interact more, to share ideas, to share ideological ideas, to share political ideas, to share cultural ideas, to share even sporting activities. It's sad that we don't see young people from China going to play soccer in Africa, to play basketball with teams in Africa. We don't see it. The only time they meet is when they are the, the Olympics or so. We need that close collaboration in the cultural sphere. China is a rich country culturally. It's a big sporting nation. We need to see more and more interactions among our young people on the African continent and China. It should not be only limited to the top leaders of our countries, to the political leaders of our countries, to the business leaders of our countries. We need to see more interactions among our young people. We need to see more exchanges in universities, in colleges, and so on. It's not enough just to give a few scholarships to African students to come and study in China. We have to do far more than that in terms of interaction, in terms of research exchanges, in terms of intellectual discourse. There is much more that is needed. We are not engaging each other. We need to rediscover each other, engage each other much more deeper, much more thorough, and much more broader. What prevents you know, Chinese curricula are structured differently from Western curricula? Your whole orientation to training engineers and so on is different. Why are we not seeing that in Africa? Why is it simply a relative handful of students who come here and learn and go back and fit into specific jobs? Why isn't that a broader debate about what is the proper way to develop youth and educate them? Why is China not engaged in that struggle openly with the West? There's a contest of ideas. I think China could be a bit more assertive about the reasons why it is successful. You know, that, 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 that has to come out a bit more.